Hey there guys, how's it going? Back with another movie review. So, the other day I was in a video store, and I was just browsing through some of the Blu-rays, looking for any deals, seeing what they had on sale. And I came across this movie, Season of the Witch, uh, that was the cheapest thing they had. It was like a pound for a relatively um, cool-looking Blu-ray with a cool case. So I decided to pick this one up, figured I'd give it a review. Now, I knew nothing about this movie other than the fact that it starred Nicolas Cage, and... That, to me, already sold the movie right off the bat, because I've always found um, Nicolas Cage entertaining. No matter what the quality of the movie he's in is like, he's just one of these actors who has that natural charisma, and when you really let him shine, and you really let him um, go crazy in his roles, he's always entertaining. He's also a very versatile and um, very good dramatic actor, too, and I was somewhat intrigued about the movie based on that. I was, I was somewhat excited to see it. Again, I knew nothing about the movie. Um, I didn't know how the movie was received critically or anything like that before I watched it. So um, I knew nothing about the plot. I just decided to sit down and watch it on its own merit. And So after watching the movie and then having a quick look online to see um, what the general consensus was about this movie, back when this movie came out, this movie got absolutely slaughtered critically it got absolutely tore apart um it had like um 10 percent on rotten tomatoes um you know metacritic imdb they all had very low scores um I, I actually went back and i don't usually do this before i review movies but i went back and looked at some of the old reviews for this movie on youtube and pretty much every reviewer was giving it like like a, a one out of ten saying it was dog shit um nobody you know when the movie came out seemed to give it a chance um Right off the bat, this is what I'm going to say, right off the bat, and, and, and before I go any further, I just want to say that in my personal opinion, I don't think this movie is anywhere near as bad as the critics gave it credit for. Um, again, when the movie came out, people just absolutely slaughtered it. All the mainstream critics, uh, the movie bombed at the box office, uh, went completely under the radar. And uh, most audiences didn't even see it. I mean, a lot of people didn't didn't even know the movie existed. I didn't even know the movie existed for quite a while. It actually came out in January in 2011. In fact, I believe it was, if I remember rightly, I remember somebody mentioning, I think this movie was actually the first movie to be released in January of 2011. So it was like the, the, the first movie that came out that year. And uh, must have been the first week of January, I guess. And... Yeah, it just it didn't do well at all. You know, usually when when movies do come out in January, um, you know that's when studios tend to put movies that they don't expect to do very well. So it seems as if the studio didn't have a lot of confidence and they didn't really promote this movie as well as they could have. And I just think that the the, the time the movie came out, the fact it starred Nicolas Cage, who a lot of people were starting to dislike, and um, just the overall setting of the movie and. How it, how it is a little bit generic, I think, put a lot of people off. But I've got to say that as a popcorn movie, as a movie that doesn't take itself too seriously, you know, as a movie that you know what you're getting when you go into a movie like this, I found this movie fairly entertaining. I thought that it was a, a, a decent enough watch. I mean, for, for what it is, it's, it's set in medieval times, okay? It's set during the, you know, the Black Plague, um... Basically, Nicolas Cage and Ron Perlman, who's his uh, sort of side character in the movie, um, I like Ron Perlman as an actor, and he does a good job here. They are crusaders, you know, taking part in the crusades, and the, and the movie starts with them taking part in some huge battles in the Middle East, you know, where the, where the crusaders are clashing with some of their enemies, and there, there's some big battle scenes early on in the, in the movie, which are okay, you know, the action sequences, they're not bad, I mean, I've seen a lot worse, I mean, they are somewhat choppy here and there, which is a problem with some of the action in this movie, which is a little bit strange, because I actually did look at the special features on the Blu-ray, and it showed you some of the behind-the-scenes look of this movie, and, you know, it showed you a couple of the fight scenes from behind the camera, and they did actually have some wide shots and some long takes with uh, certain characters having sword fights and whatnot, but for whatever reason, in the final cut of the movie, they decided to just cut it all together and make it all flashy, you know, like they do with a lot of modern action movies, and you couldn't really follow the action as clearly as you could if it was all in one take, and that was a bit strange to me, I, I felt that the action scenes were a little bit poorly edited in the movie, but like I said, I've seen a lot worse, right, this isn't like, um, Taken 3 type action scenes, you know, it's not anything like that, it's not like, um, 
you know, Resident Evil type action scenes. It's not that bad. You know, it doesn't overly um, use th things like CGI and quick cuts and shaky cam. And, you know, there's not an overabundance of CGI, despite the fact there is quite a bit of CGI in green screen. It doesn't feel overwhelming in this movie. And I just felt that, just as a spectacle, the movie looks okay. The special effects, you know, the, the special effects are not that bad. Okay, they're okay. They're, they're not great. They're, there's nothing groundbreaking here. They're okay. As for the um, overall plot of the movie, basically, like, like I said, they're crusaders, but they desert the crusades after they have a bit of, um, you know, a bit of a problem dealing emotionally with what they do. Like Nicolas Cage notices there's a lot of like um, collateral damage and people getting caught in the crossfire and he decides to walk away him and Ron, Ron Perlman and basically they um, come across this town which is strucken with the plague you know people are dying you know people are getting sick and um, the cardinal who's actually played by Christopher Lee Christopher Lee makes a bit of an extended cameo in this movie he's dying he's very ill and he basically hires a priest and a local soldier to escort this young woman who they believe to be a witch to another town for a trial so that they can determine whether or not she was a witch and whether or not she was behind the plague and that's basically the um you know the gist of the plot uh, there's a you know there's a, a decent acting performance from Nicolas Cage and this is one of his performances where it, it's not like one of the crazy over the top Nicolas Cage performances that I was somewhat expecting this is a much more like um serious and reserved performance from him again the movie doesn't take itself overly serious but Nicolas Cage definitely um does play a serious character you know he's he's the very stoic and heroic character who's trying to do the right thing and trying to save everybody and whatnot and he's he, you know he's the good guy in the movie he's the guy who's likable and, and easy to root for some quite interesting actors in this movie stephen campbell moore who's um quite a popular like tv actor he's in this movie he plays a, a priest and i actually really liked his character you know his character was one of my favorite characters in the movie probably my favorite and um He's a character who you're not ultimately too sure about at the beginning of the movie. You th you're not too sure of his intentions, but midway through the movie, it becomes very clear that, you know, he's the good guy. I mean, it, you know, very, very interesting character, very interesting actor, and I really did like his performance. Um, also, um, Stephen Graham, you guys who are familiar with um, some old English movies like uh, like Snatch or This Is England, you know, he's quite a popular actor over here, and yeah, he... Um, is in this movie too he plays sort of like this uh, hustler who, who's their guide you know they hire him to you know to lead them on the way to this city because it's quite a perilous journey and um i mentioned christopher lee's in this movie yeah he's, he's only in like one scene he's like an extended cameo um the the lady who plays the the girl that's actually who she's named as in the credits is the girl you don't actually hear her name uh, she's played by claire foy um I'm not too familiar with anything else that she's been in, but um, yeah, she she does a, a again a serviceable job, decent enough. She's kind of creepy looking, and um, you know, kind of weird. And every each time you see her, she looks different. Like she's very um, very duplicitous as a character. Like you see her one minute, she looks innocent and weak, and you're like you, you know, you, you get the sense that she's been like wrongly convicted. But then in the next scene, she's like really really creepy and does like really strange things and you're like no hang on a second there's something weird about her maybe maybe she is a witch you know maybe there's something behind her and and she's just a character that throughout the movie you're not too sure about again kind of like the the priest character you're not too ultimately sure of his intentions and it's the same with her but on like a larger scale like you you, you know she does certain things in the movie where you think maybe she's um there by mistake but then you realize how manipulative she's being and how there's, there's definitely something to the claims and you know again I'm not going to spoil what, what's revealed about her in the end but yeah she's definitely not as she seems at the beginning you know that it's actually a lot worse what it turns out is going on with her so um, yeah I, I thought she did a decent enough job she's kind of again the villain of the movie you know she's the the main antagonist the, the, the villain of the movie so she does a decent enough job the acting performance and um, yeah, other than that, it's it's this is just a, a, a pretty generic movie. Again, it's a, it's an action adventure movie. It has a, a plot that is um, 
very simple you know it doesn't take itself too seriously it's pretty simple when you think about it i mean again it's about the two crusaders um aiding the priest in his journey to try and put this witch on trial or this potential witch on trial and there's a big cgi extravaganza at the end of the movie the action sequences are okay nothing special the acting performance is again okay nothing special uh, seen a lot better seen a lot worse um, you could do a lot worse than this movie. You really could do a lot worse than this movie. I mean, again, it's it's a Nicolas Cage movie. If if you're not a fan of Nicolas Cage or Ron Perlman, you won't enjoy this movie. If you're a fan of Nicolas Cage, you will enjoy this movie. Um, if you like sort of uh, medieval fantasy epics, you've probably seen a lot better than this, but you've probably seen a lot worse than this too. And, um, I mean, I would take this movie over a lot of other movies in this sort of genre. You know, certainly movies that came out after it. I mean... It's really interesting to me. Like, I look at the reviews for this movie. I see people giving it 1 out of 10. Um, I see people calling it dog shit. I see it gets, uh, like, what, 11% on Rotten Tomatoes. It gets, like, um, what, f a 4 points or whatever, however they do it on IMDb. I see the low scores for this movie. And I think to myself, over the past couple of years, some of the movies that have come out that get, like, 90%, like, movies like The Festival, for example, which is one of the biggest pieces of shit I've ever seen. That movie got, like, 97% on Rotten Tomatoes, but this movie gets 11%, really? I mean, a movie like Black Christmas, which came out last year, which was the worst piece of human garbage I think I've ever seen. One of the worst movies of all time. That movie gets, um, <laughs> that movie got, what, 38%, something like that? Um, you know, so, so like like triple what this movie got i mean come on man come on this movie wasn't that bad okay it was an okay action movie it had a bit of adventure it was nothing special but it, you, you could do a lot worse okay i give this movie a five out of ten it's it's average okay it's not a bad movie it's not a great movie it's a fun popcorn movie it's short it's only about an hour 30 minutes with credits so it's really about an hour 25 minutes you know before the credits it's it's nothing nothing special okay it's very generic but i've seen a lot worse you can do a lot worse so that's pretty much all i have to say about this movie man um i give this movie a five out of ten i think it's a decent fantasy movie nothing special um, I would recommend it if you're just looking for something to do on a Friday night. It's a good Friday night watch, good popcorn movie. Like I said, you can get this movie very cheap. Uh, I found a Blu-ray of it for a pound. Um, you know, you, you could find this movie on DVD in a second-hand store. It would be very cheap. Um, let me know what you guys think anyway. Um, yeah, um, I, I'm kind of glad I got this Blu-ray. It was a fun one to review. So, yeah, stay tuned for more movie reviews. I'm going to be reviewing a lot of older movies. Thanks for watching. God bless.